Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of One in a Million! And today is another More to Life Than Monday. Yes, our topic this week is going to be about how I know Korean. And just for you guys, I became all Kiyomi. No, I'm not gonna sing this song. It's hella cringe. But what I am gonna do for you is I'm gonna tell you how I learned Korean. So basically, uh, oh, and this week I didn't forget the light because I need to be all up to par with the Korean beauty standards. But yeah, basically, let's see how I learned Korean. Well, first of all, okay, guys. I know a lot of you guys have heard me speak in Korean and they're like, oh my gosh, you can speak Korean. But I mean, honestly, to my standards, like I could speak better Korean. Like I would consider myself an intermediate speaker in Korean, actually. Like I have still a lot to learn. Like I can get away with speaking to Koreans and I can get away with them like understanding me and having like very simple conversations but I can't write an essay. Like, sorry, can't, can't uh, graduate from Seoul University unless it's in English, I don't know. Or I'm some sort of foreign exchange student. I don't know, I haven't researched it, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's see. I started, it, it all kind of connected with me becoming interested with Korean culture and becoming interested with like, the Korean entertainment industry, because as you may or may not know, I'm actually a filmmaker. I've worked on several commercials and short films, and uh, my job is I'm actually a video producer, but enough about me. More about learning Korean. So, uh, you know, once I became interested in the culture, that motivated me to wanting to learn Korean because I was like, oh my God, like the entertainment industry is booming. So like, I want to get involved in that, right? So I started learning Korean in, when I was still at my university about, well, I started learning Korean by myself on YouTube. I actually went on YouTube my friend now YouTube, uh, and the f the it just I I wasn't actually like it, it was indirectly that I learned Korean because I just googled how to say hello and it came up with 안녕하세요, um or 안녕하세요, 안녕하세요, yeah there it is, um but it uh, and then I saw sweet and tasty or also known as Professor Owen Friends pop up. And I was like, ooh, what's this? Hello in Korean, click. So you know how YouTube works where it's just a black hole. So like 50 videos later, you know, I already have my notepad with all these words written down and I'm already memorizing. And Korean's actually, <laughs> Korean is actually really easy to learn if you know Spanish. Why? Because if you know about English and long vowels, like A, E, I, O, U, it's like so different from other languages, right? But then in Spanish, the short vowels, we only use short vowels really, is A, E, I, O, U. And then in Korean, it's the same thing, like short vowels. So a lot of the pronunciation, like I feel like when Korean people speak Spanish or when Spanish people speak Korean, the pronunciation is very similar, so it's easy for them to learn it. So, um, when I looked it up and I saw the pronunciation, I was like so motivated. I'm like, oh, I'm already motivated because of the entertainment industry. And like, it's easy to learn as well. Like the, the Korean Hangul is hella easy. It's like the American alphabet. There's like 26 different characters that you learn and you mash up together. And like, once you learn how to do it, you're like, oh my God, I, I know how to read, you know? It's once you get, the ball rolling, you're just boom, you're just into it. And once you're into it, you cannot get out. It's like K-pop, but that's gonna be another video. Anyway, so yeah, like that's how it started. YouTube, Professor O, eat your kimchi. 
uh, was the next one that I followed. They were uh, back when they were in South Korea many years ago. This, this is like back when I was in college, so I probably started this whole learning Korean adventure like six years ago. Um, so yeah, like Simon and Martina eat your kimchi when they were in Korea because now they're in Japan um, and talk to me in Korean and I've actually met Hyunwoo uh, from talk to me in Korean uh, in person in KCON several times and actually I worked with him in a radio show that he's doing for Koreans learning English in Korea so I actually collaborated with a few of those uh, like segments which is pretty awesome um let's see and like there's just so many so I you know it just I was like oh and I kept learning and it, it was very interesting and they make it very fun you know they make they put like little images and they give you sentences and they dress up as characters or they're just like funny and interactive so that oh that was like I was I was lost in that world for a while um but yeah so then you know youtube mostly for several years using korean maybe like two years before i actually decided to buy a textbook and be like okay i know a lot of words i know a lot of phrases now i need to start learning how to make sentences and you know then i i think i found a book online like a book that was a pdf um and you know, I started going through it and learning, oh, like basic, basic stuff, like yeo, yeo, ayo, oyo, like conjugations, like sentence endings to be able to say, oh, I am, you are, this is, we're here, you know, stuff like that. Um, so though, then it continued. And of course, throughout this whole time, um, because as I said before, there's foreigners from all over the world, everybody comes to Hollywood, everybody comes to Southern California. So I had a lot of, and especially for some reason at my university, there were a lot of Koreans there. So I think that helped. Um, but yeah, so like, um, you know, I had many friends that were Korean. So at the same time that I was doing YouTube, I was talking to them in person, I was looking up the book. And then there was a point where I was like, three years later of me just doing it by myself. I think that's when I picked up and was finally like, there's Korean classes at my school. Why don't I just take one to like learn it officially? Like, like learn the stuff that I'm missing because I know I pick up like, you know, kind of like when, you, when you're when you a little kid and you're a little baby and you're learning through your parents, but you have to go to school to learn it the proper way and learn all the grammar and all the conjugations and all the fancy stuff that a little too hard for parents to teach you at home and every day. You just kind of pick it up because that's what they say. So I took a class, then I took another class. So I took two classes in college. And then after college and I went into the work world, it wasn't until a year into the work world that I was like, you know what, I miss Korean. Like my Korean, I feel like my Korean, like I'm not, I'm not learning anything new. Like I've downloaded apps, but like I, I, like, I need something consistent, something that keeps me going. Um, so, because also like after college, a lot of the friends I had that kept me and my Korean like going, they went back to Korea. So I was like, oh, like, oh I don't have anybody to talk to anymore. And um, I really wanted to be able to continue that because I felt like, oh, I know so much. I still have more to learn. So I wish I could like make friends again. So I started like looking up friends and oh, let's meet up with this language exchange. I met up a lot of friends though. Unfortunately, like they left as well back to Korea or they live hella far away. But um, so it's it's been pretty hard. So I was like, you know what? A year into the work world, I'm gonna make an effort. My professor from my university told me that there was this one place in LA that taught Korean um, that was like a big center where she used to teach. And I was like, ooh, like I remembered that. And she said, oh, if you if you go to that, um, take the, the first intermediate class. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, so after the year of me working, I decided to make the commitment to take the specific days off at work where I would go and I would, you know, continue my language learning because I was like, I'm, I'm already 
so far, and I'm, I'm almost at the fluent stage. Like I'm almost there. I can, I can taste it. I can grasp it. So I've been taking classes there. This is my second semester. Uh, you take one class, basically one day a week. It's great. I probably will make a video about that place in uh, the, let's see, the uh, weekly travel Wednesdays. I'll probably make a video about that. So stay tuned guys. Um, but it's, it's really been an amazing journey. Like I really love Korean because it's such a cute language. All the girls dress like this, not really. Um, and like, I, well, honestly, when I was a kid, I was always fascinated by languages. Like I remember I was like, probably like, maybe like around the seven age when I thought to myself like, oh, languages are so cool. Like I know English, I know Spanish. Like I, I remember being like, I want to learn some sort of Asian language because I thought like, oh, if I know that, that's kind of going to be like my secret language. You know, like not everybody's going to know, not, not everybody's going to know it. Not, not every, you don't, if you walk around, not everybody knows Korean. Only Koreans know Korean. It's really rare if you find like anyone that's not Korean that knows Korean. Like maybe you'll find like a Chinese person or a Japanese person just because they live so close by. If they're from that country, they may know it, but not always you know like it, it really depends on if they wanted to study it or if they lived in the country so it's very rare like usually like lately because korean culture and pop music and the dramas and everything are becoming so popular people are learning korean like they're becoming interested so they want to learn korean there's actually a lot of really famous youtubers not just the ones that taught me korean initially but ones that I've followed afterwards that motivated me to make this channel that speak great Korean, that are 100% fluent. They're like my motivation. I'm like, yes, I want to be like that. And not just because they're a YouTuber, just because they're really good at speaking Korean. I'm like, yes, I'm almost there. Like I'm, I'm going, I'm going to be one of you. I'm going to be like, yes. <laughs> so yeah, man, like, you know, that's, that's how I learned Korean. So I'm almost there. I'm not 100% fluent. I can get away with speaking, saying several things, but you know, I'm a perfectionist. I'm very like on top of things. I'm very motivated, self-motivated. Um, so I, I really want to become fluent and um, you know, I really want to learn it and I'm gonna get there and I'm very positive and sure that I'm gonna achieve it someday and maybe you guys will be there in the journey with me as I get more fluent and I'll maybe make some videos in Korean, who knows? So yeah, that was this week of More to Life Than Mondays. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe down below if you like this kind of content. Make sure to like the video to show support and let me know that you really like this kind of video and you want some more. Comment down below, let me know your feedback. Let me know if you have any questions that I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Um, let me know if if you what what kind of videos you want to see for this series of more to life than mondays let me know anything you'd like you know just write whatever you want just try to be constructive and don't let don't leave any hate comments there's no room for hate in here um but yeah make sure to follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, so you can keep up with what's up with the channel, what's coming up, what's been up, and what will be up. Yeah. Peace out, guys. See you soon.